Welcome to the show. Yo, we hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't a regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. Yeah, this that Dealer Talk. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we have none other than Mr. Jason Knight, one of the co-founders of Lotlinks. Jason, what's up, man? How are you, sir? Herb, how are you, brother? Good to be here. Yeah, dude. Super excited for this conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I kick things out with, uh, with a background. So tell us about you. Man, I uh, I like to say I've been chronically out of work, but uh, you know I I'm a Detroit kid, born and bred. Um, first left, went to California for college. Wanted to get out of the cold weather, and you know sight unseen, literally was like I'm in, I'm going. <laughs> uh, but my first job was doing airbag and seatbelt testing. I'm an engineer by training. I try to hide it, uh, but doing you know literally crashing test dummies on a sled into walls and other things and it was amazing and then candidly i got out of that and got into consumer products and and did a a stint with uh you know folks at mr clean and pepto-bismol and metamucil and you know kind of got into the business side there and then got in the wine industry and uh you know was involved with an imports group where we would bring wines over from outside of the us and sell them in, in here europe you know the new world things like that then got into private equity businesses <laughs> and uh, and ran and sold three of those uh, and w- really then got introduced to, you know, the co-founders of Lotlinks, fell in love with what, you know, everything was talking about and the opportunity that we could have. And, you know, of course, you once you have Detroit in your blood, man, you can't get that out. And, uh, and you know, here we are almost uh, 10 years later talking about Lotlinks. Right on, man. I love the the transition. It just makes sense that you ended up in the car business, dude. <laughs> man, I'll tell you, it's like dog years, but uh, it's been a great ride. And I'll tell you, auto is amazing. I mean, the people, the industry, the diversity is incredible. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, for me, no, no other industry I'd rather be in. Amen. Um, dude, so you're from Detroit. I'm from I'm from Dearborn, dude. Oh man, I grew up on uh, John R. Between eighteen and nineteen. Oh, right on. And I, I went to Wayne State, too. That's where I... Where I oh, where nice. I, uh, you know, my mom got her master's from Wayne State. I, yeah. uh, like I said, I fled. I think, you know, Michigan was glad to get rid of me, brother. They were like, get out, go to Cali. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, well, I'm in Vegas myself now. I can't I can't put up with those with that winter, man. But I envy your tax rate, brother. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you're not that far away, man. You can always relocate. So. <laughs> Cali doesn't like that. My kids don't like that either. Yeah, th- there's a lot. Of, so I, I work with this group in, in St. George, Utah, and there's a lot of people from California, dude, like a lot. In Idaho yeah. and Oregon. Uh, it's a little bit like a virus, man. This spreads and spreads and spreads. It's uh, mm-hmm. They're everywhere. My dad's actually outside of Vegas, so I spent a lot of time there. Oh, right on, dude. All right, man, dude, listen, I'm super stoked for this conversation. Um, uh, you know, you and I talked recently and I was, I was blown away by, by just where the conversation was going. And I was like, dude, we got we to gotta do something and share this with dealers. So um, let's just get into it, man. I, yeah. I really want to talk about analytics. Um, I, I just, I, I love to have those types of conversations. I think that dealers in particular um, uh, can benefit, you know, from, from more content on, on that topic out there. So uh, 50,000 view, man. What, wh- where's the miss when it comes to GA in, in our industry right now? It's interesting. I think it's changed over time. So probably, you know, 2014, uh, if you remember, most folks either didn't have GA on their site or it wasn't set up correctly, or you had multiple mm-hmm. instances and, you know, you're getting all this echoing and crazy stuff. Today, I think it's really around not Google Analytics, but around tag manager and event tracking. And what I mean specifically is it used to be everything went to the homepage, everything went to a single page, and then the consumers had to really navigate through from there somewhere else. And, and what we would call vanity metrics, time on site, bounce rate, pages per session were really important because you really can't get very much information from a homepage if you're really trying to buy a car. And so Today, that's not the case, man. I think the the smart dealers, the smart marketers are sending traffic where they want those consumers to go. So if you're trying to get service customers, landing them on your homepage is not the place to do it. 
You want to send them to the search right. page. You want to send them to the appointment maker. You know, you're selling a car, send them to the VDP. I mean, Lord knows that's what we believe in. And so I think that when you do that, you really need to track what's going on inside the page. And I think a lot of people are familiar with, with Tag Manager and GA, but if they're not, I think about it, especially being from Detroit, I think about it as an alarm you know, system. Google Analytics will tell you if somebody breaks into your house. Right. But that's it. When they come, when they go. Tag manager will tell you that they went into this room, they rifled your drawer, you know, they pulled you know, some jewelry out, they did whatever. It's what they did and what they, you know, spent time doing. And today with the our ability, you know, as an industry to target, our ability to understand what's going on and then use that data to better target, man, you gotta have it. So I think dealers are a lot of dealers are really missing the boat on leveraging what goes on in their website. And then frankly, optimizing for it. Lots of folks have tag manager, but it's put on by their web host or their marketing company or something else. They're not using that data, man. It's your data. you got to, you know, understand it, dig into it. Yeah, man. I love a bunch of stuff that you just talked about. So let's break it down into pieces here. First of all, uh, let's talk about the, the, what you just talked, what you just mentioned about, you know, uh, the going into the room and, and going through things. Right. So I really liked th that yeah. setup. What is it that we need to be looking at internally when it comes to that? What are the behaviors, right? Because you just hit on one of my biggest pet peeves. So I go into these, these consultative conversations. First of all, I, I go into their GA. Some stores still, 2021, this just happened to me recently, don't even have their, their website um, on GA. Like it's just zero. There's no information. It hasn't that even been connected. Me. Yeah, dude. It hurts me. Or you go into one and they have, you know, all this traffic that they're driving there and they're paying thousands upon thousands of dollars, but they have no goal set up. So, yeah, I mean, it's driving, it's, you know, it's, it's driving traffic to the side, but what is happening once that, that it gets there? And if you don't know that, how do you know that it's working or it's, or it's delivering any sort of ROI? You so, don't. Yeah, right. So what are the things that we need to, you know, just you know, when it comes to behaviors, what is it that we're, that we need to pay attention to? Yeah, Herbie, you hit a great point. I mean, look, I, I frankly had moved past just generic goal setup because in my mind, of course, everyone's doing that. But but you're right. There are a lot of folks or at least some number of folks who haven't. What do you I, I think there's some basics. I mean, I think it's for us, we've been able to I mean, we're all about data and, and about using artificial intelligence to predict outcomes, which is what AI is good for. So what we care about, you know, at a really entry level is is the consumer engaged, right? You could put up an ad that says, hey, click here for free concert tickets and send them to a dealer website and you would get super cheap traffic, but they would get there and they'd be pissed off. So, you know, are they looking at photos? Let's, let's talk about selling cars, right? That's what we care about. Are they looking at photos? How far are they scrolling down the page? How much time are they spending reading those things? Are they engaging in other aspects of the page? So do you have a third party, uh, you know, button? to do a trade in or to start a lead form or to chat. If you just get people who go in, it's like people who show up who are stiffs on the dealership, man, mm -hmm. right? You'll never finance them. They might as well not show up. If you get people on your website who don't do anything, it's worthless. Right. What's There's no value point? there. Yeah. yeah, totally. So, 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 okay. So then my mind goes to, here's, here's how I do it. So I, I have two strategies, right. That I, that I, that I work with, with my dealers on number one is we want to get, we want to take control of our inventory. And what I mean by that is we want to take it away from all these third party sites and drive it directly to your website. Cause it's on your website. There's no competition. It's your inventory. Right. And now with the specificity of channels like Facebook and stuff, you can go 10 miles, 20 miles, 35 miles from your dealership. So it's not like you're driving traffic, you know, from thousands of miles away. It's, right. it's all local stuff, people that you can impact and sell a car to, today. So now that we have that, that ability, then once they're there, your, your website needs to be ready to handle that traffic. So whatever your strategy is to keep that person engaged in your sandbox, but whatever that strategy is, if it's third party widgets or if it's internal widgets or whatever, those calls to action, those those behaviors, they need to be tracked in GA so that you can see Amen. if people are t are clicking or not. If you're not doing that, then you don't have a grasp on on what you're doing as far as marketing goes. There's no way. I mean, you can say you're, you're yeah, I blind, traffic, man. but you're you're driving blind. You you might. I mean, look, you might get away with it. You might not run into something. 
but you, you got to know where you're going. And more importantly, you need to know what you're getting for it. And, and, you know, you said a couple of really interesting things, which is there are tons of channels available today. And I think that, that dealers have never had more opportunity mm -hmm. to bring consumers to their website. And I, and I agree. I mean, look, especially you're an ex third party guy, right? Like, you know, the pros and cons and how it's evolved. Nothing is better than your website. Not only are you able to then retarget to those folks, but yeah, you're right. You're not competitive. You're not having to pay extra money to get a big ad to try to conquest somebody else back. Dude, it all goes away. And, and oh, by the way, you can cross sell them on other things. And, and so rather than using your inventory as bait, which effectively that's, that's what, you know, a lot of the endemics are doing. You're, you're bringing folks to your, to your site, in your brand, in your environment. And then to your point, you got to make sure you don't screw it up once they get there. Once they're there. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Why, why isn't that happening, man? Why are dealers and listen, there's some that do a really good job. So I, I hate making these statements because I don't want to sound like I'm generalizing, but there's just, it happens consistent enough where, where, I, where I feel that these conversations are valuable, but why is it that we're not paying attention to that internally? Do you think, or, or a better, or better question that I've been, that I've been posing all this season do you think that it makes sense for dealers to create a role? There should be a role in the dealership now that all they do is they they set up they they create these these um, reviews of all the stuff you know like a data analyst or something. In my opinion, like that should be a position at the dealership that to help the dealers kind of manage this. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, look, I think if you can afford it, I think it's a great idea. Um, and I think the folks who have multiple dealers or who are big single points. They probably can. I think there's a lot of dealers out there, though, that that's just it's just too expensive. I mean, because you don't want some new kid off the street who's like, yeah, I can do social. I got an inside account. I mean, you need somebody who's really got some juice and to be able to figure it out. And those folks aren't cheap. So yeah. I, I would agree with you. You need that. I think that um, I think there's a relatively low bar to establish some criteria with your data that you can look at in Google Analytics, you know, kind of bring it back full circle what we're talking about to really get a sense of, am I getting what I expect? By the way, man, we'll set it up for a dealer, even if they're not a customer of ours. Like we're that passionate as a company about Google Analytics and Tag Manager. We'll help a dealer set it up. They don't have to, I mean, no pay, free. You don't even have to be a customer because we just want to see the industry succeed. And so does it make sense to have somebody? For sure. You know, do the big boys have that? I mean, they have multiple folks. Sure. You know, you're a 15 store group. Can you have? Can you afford that? Absolutely. You know, you're one or two stores in, let's say, a semi-rural or rural location. Man, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. That person better be selling some, you know, steel too. Right. Um, so I think that's hard. But but it's a luxury if you can do it. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, because on the other end of the spectrum is like you can't is, is a general manager really expected to be a Google Analytics no. expert or a GSM, you know what I mean? Like, and they shouldn't be right, but there should be somebody within the dealership or a partnership or something, because yep. it's really, really important. I, here's the deal, like, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel that um, enough with the third parties, like the leverage that they have for what they deliver. It's just, it's not there, man. And you know, what drives the majority of the business are 10 cars typically. And then they walk in with these reports like, Hey, you know, look at these VDPs and stuff. And like, when you break it down, 80% of that came from those units that are, are going to get a bunch of activity. And then everything else is hidden and nobody sees it. And you start to see the diminishing return, right? So, so those cars had over 30 VDPs and everybody else, if they got one or two, you know, that's, that's, you know, that, way too much, you know, dude, dude, you just hit on something that we've been talking a lot about, which is being VIN aware. And, and it's exactly what you said. When you look at, at your dealership and your, what you're getting for your money, 80% of it goes to 20% or fewer of the vehicles. You probably don't need help selling that, you know, seven used seven series BMW. That's like a decade old because it's five grand. It is getting hammered with traffic right? organically and on third parties. You need your bread and butter stuff, man. It's that, it's that eco sport that, it's been a lot for you know five months and nobody has ever looked at it. People don't come down to the lot to browse. 
they come down with intent. And when they come down, it's not just, hey, I'm going to go see what's on the Ford lot today. I mean, look, there's some folks who are like that. Uh, my father-in-law is like that. I mean, sure. God bless him. But most <laughs> people are coming down and they've looked at the car and they're like, man, I know I want the one with leather and the sport package and it's, you know, VIN XYZ. Now you may sell them something else. I mean, dealers always say consumers buy what I sell them. Totally true. But they got to come down for something. And you know, for a long time, and it, this goes back to my experience, you know, the co consumer products would try to do that sort of drop and swap kind of thing, which is I'm going to sell toilet paper at cost or below cost. Because when you come in to buy that, you're going to buy toothpaste and, you know, Tide detergent or whatever at full price. I'm going to make all my money back that way. That is a really inefficient way and very, very scary for auto because with the internet, and the ubiquity of knowledge and data, they're just not gonna ever come down. Right. And so if your vehicles aren't getting shopped, you're not gonna sell them. Or, or you're wildly unlikely to sell them. But here's the deal, and this is what I, I'm not, this this is gonna sound like commercial for lot links, but it's not. It's just Thank it's you. the truth. That's why I use you guys. But totally. um the reality is is that there are buyers for your car in the market, and we do have the specificity of the data to pinpoint the two, to match them, to be like, hey, this guy is looking for this car that's considered a low performing unit or whatever, but he's looking for that car. Let's just connect the two. Let's put that car in front of that, in front of that, those eyeballs. Yep. No, you're totally right. And, and I appreciate that. And, and it is what we do. Um, and it's, it's complicated as you know. Um, so I'll try to keep it simple though. I'm happy to get into the weeds. <laughs> I, I once described it to somebody as a dating app for your cars, right? So consumers are out there looking, we're able to see, or, you know, through, let's take it away from Lolix, right? We can do all this stuff, but the data on your website and in other mediums, you can take that data and you can use it to identify what that person wants. And then you can, you, if you need help with what they want, you can put it in front of them. That's how you can drive efficiency in the market right today. What you don't want to do is advertise the same car across 15 different channels into the same person a hundred times. One, they can only buy one car. Two, you can only sell that thing one time. It's just not efficient, but you're right. People need to use the data. It starts with your analytics. It starts with your tag manager. And then frankly, finding a partner who can, you know, leverage what you have and what you need help with with what's out there and available from a consumer standpoint so that you could put two and two together and get out of the way. Yeah. So, so you mentioned something right now and maybe I misunderstood, but let's, let, let's talk it out and, and, and see. So if you, if you're, if you're blasting that piece of inventory on multiple channels, to me, that's, that's very inefficient in the world that we live in today, back in the, in the traditional and the early days of, of digital, that made sense because you know what I mean? Like it was it was a reach game. Like you come on, come on. Yep. Yeah. You put it in front of as many people and you just kind of pray that that person's going to come in. Now, with again, like I said, with the, with how specific, uh, you know, there's a digitization to data, right? That the, spe the it's very specific in, 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 in so many different ways. So we can target now. And in today, when you do that, when you when you still when you're still blasting, right? You run pray and pray. Right. You run the risk of of the information. First of all, not being correct across platforms. So now you you could have that car on some, and I've seen this before, where it's it's got it's photo and stuff on your website, but it, for whatever reason there was an error in the feed, and then now it goes out there and it's got the wrong price, the wrong yep. photos, and it creates a lot of distrust. So you lose control of the narrative, right, with that customer. And we're already at a disadvantage when it comes at with consumers because you know we the stigma and all that stuff. So. Is it fair to say that when we when we're more specific, then it, it's better for us just overall because we have more control over that message, right? I mean, it, it just makes it easier for us to control that experience. I mean, there's so many things in there to unpack. Um, the sure answer is yes. I mean, clearly specificity matters. Uh, you know, one of the things you talked about early on is is really we would say the problems with channel marketing, and in fact, we see channel marketing dying, and and channel marketing not because the channels are bad, but because if you're if you're spending a fixed amount of budget on social media and you're doing, you know, a fixed budget on search and you're doing some amount on display and some on, you know, um, whatever the endemics you're overlapping in a way that's, that it's, it's not and I, and I hate to keep going back to, you, but it's not VIN aware, right? Some of those channels 
are really great for specific VINs. Some are great for all VINs. Some are great for no VINs. You know, the, the endemics get a bad rap, you know, and I want to defend them for a little bit. The folks who are on those websites, man, they're looking for cars. Sure. I mean, they're shopping. Where they fall down is their ability to target, their ability to, you know, change things around so that, you know, all the traffic doesn't go just to one vehicle. That's where there's issues. But you, a channel marketing strategy is inherently wasteful. And it, come, it, it brings to mind that John Wanamaker quote, right? I mean, everybody knows it. Half my marketing is wasted. I don't know what half. Right. We have the data today to know which half. Yeah. We can use that targeting to determine and and not have the waste. Because now instead of, you know, if if you know the white car is getting crushed in traffic, which is awesome, stop. Focus on the red one and the silver <laughs> one and the gold one. I mean, dude, you know, it just spread it a little, spread around the love a little bit. So, so I, I love that. It's a good segue to this question. And I know, listen, I know that this is your guys' philosophy, but it's not, I, I believe in it, dude. Like, again, I, I don't want to sound pitchy here, but I feel that we, we don't, we, how do I say this? We don't look at, at, at the inventory in the right way because we don't realize that, that we, we panic, right? We're like, oh, we're not selling. We got to do all these things. Let's just, let's just push, 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 right? Instead of pulling, which is a more effective Yep. marketing strategy. But we don't look at the numbers, right? So we, we, we have a ton of inventory that, that let's just say that 30 VDPs is the, is, is the threshold, right? More than 30 VDPs, now you're overspending on that vehicle. Right. Less than 30 VDPs, there's an opportunity there. We don't focus on that below, right? We don't look at, that, at those numbers. And we're like, if we did, then we would, we would stop spending on those 30 at all just don't put any more money and take that budget and put it on those cars that are below that because those are the cars that need help that's what you need to drive traffic to that's where you need to get creative on to to create those extra wins because those those cars that are above that they're gonna sell man people they have enough attention i mean do you think that we missed that ball in the industry as a whole yeah, I mean, God, I hundred percent agree. And and I think there's a couple of things that are really, you know, that are really powerful in that. I mean, to your point, yeah. Look, there's a diminishing return after you get above a certain level of shopping. You know, luxury might be a little higher, some bread and butter stuff might be a little right. bit lower, but I think 30 is a great number. Let's use that as a number. Most of what you get from your marketing activities goes to some of those cars and they'll get literally a thousand shoppers. Man, if that thing ain't shopping, one, you, you need to start thinking about the quality of what you're getting there and what you're paying for. But two, it probably has got three wheels or your pricing's bad or or whatever. Process. And, and I, yeah, well, exactly. And I think yeah. the bigger thing you said there is that as an industry, price is our hammer. So if something is going wrong, man, hell, if the, if the sun's not out, I was like, well, I got to lower the price. Right. You know, it's not <laughs> selling. I got to lower the price. You know, nobody's looking at it. I got to lower the price. Dude, you don't have to lower the price. And what we see, and this is across thousands and thousands of dealerships, is that lowering the price, it costs you about $400 in a price drop to get one incremental shopper to look at that car. I can tell you- Say that again. That, Say that again. So when you, when you correlate price decreases to increased shopping mm -hmm. across, I mean, in literally thousands and thousands of data points, it's about $400 per price drop to get an incremental shopper to look at that vehicle. Wow. So think about what that means, right? Dude. Most of the time we're lowering the price because one, we're using a pricing tool that's telling us to, right? W we can table that. I don't, you know, it, it, there's value. You gotta be a little concerned, but ultimately your hope on lowering the price is that it pops up on SEO or that suddenly you, you come up higher on the random endemics or whatever, that's that's your strategy to get more shopping? I mean, that's that's foolish. <laughs> what you need to do is take, hell, take $300 and put it in your pocket and take the $100 and advertise that damn thing. Right. And, and you're gonna come out so much further ahead. And, you know, we've really built a business around understanding that and developing the tools for dealers to use and then to then go out and deploy it. You may not even use lot links, I mean, I, I think you will when you understand it, but if you don't, you're still doing better than you would have if you were just, you know, trying to drop the price and get people to look at it. It's foolish. We know from studies, and, and again, I don't want to get I don't want to get pitchy either. 
if you drive VIN specific traffic to vehicles, you will sell more right. and you will make higher gross margins, period, full stop. Absolutely. Dude, if you want to put that to the test, and again, whether you 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 use lot links or not, do do a test where you take your oldest units, right? Your oldest units that haven't moved and put and do VIN specific strategies to those cars and tie them to people that are looking for that piece of inventory and then yep. watch that in 30 days. See how many of those yep. cars you sell. Amen. And and I tell you, you can start to get that detail from Google Analytics, right? You can drill into buy VIN shopping, it's hard. Um, and again, I would tell you, look, we'll, we'll give you a tool to do that for free. Uh, all it's easy. But your eye once your eyes are open, man, it is it, you will never close them again. Yeah. Because you'll see just how it goes to one side. But you can do it in analytics very easily. If you just drill into your specific traffic sources, and look for the landing page or look at the, the vehicles they look at because you know, all the dealers today use um, web hosts that will, you know, you can break out VIN level advertising. All right, man. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. So let's see where, where this goes. Um, so one of the things that, that uh, you know, I used to sell Auto Trader, right? And I used to have these conversations with dealers about, you know, I'd walk in with my report, you got tons of VDPs and their response was always like, well, I didn't sell any more cars. So, I mean, the VDPs are great, but it's not translating. Um, and so they always ask for, can, is there a, is, can you at least drive them to my website or could you give me the number of the, of the people that, that you, that clicked so that we can try to sell them? And of course that's, that's not the way that it's set up. Right. So now some of these third parties, what they're doing is they're leveraging Facebook. Think about that. So the third parties are leveraging Facebook instead of the dealer going directly on Facebook and leveraging themselves. I'm just saying, but anyway, so they're leveraging Facebook. To add to to add traffic to their platform and then use that to retarget or send customers to dealers' website. Great. So you can see them now actually as a as a source, right? Like it shows lots of traffic to the website. In my opinion, those the behaviors on on, on those strategies are questionable. But my question to you is. Is that is that effective? Do you think that that's the evolution of third parties, or or I mean, because the again, I mean, they're yeah, they they get a lot of traffic on their site, and then they they drive them to your website, but it's still not. It doesn't look like quality traffic. Man, um, you know, I like to keep friends in the industry, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna keep this you know kind of a high level. I would tell you, I think it's an improvement. Um, I think that the third party struggle with or are struggling with uh relevancy again they get great shoppers you know what do you what are those shoppers doing are you leveraging those for your business it's it's difficult to say i think that that the retargeting products and the things that that you i think you're referring to are an improvement i mean i would tell you look i, I don't i know of a, a business and and candidly man they 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 say it's retargeting it's not retargeting it's actually audience extension based on the you know, the Facebook pixel, for example, that's on their website. And then they're driving traffic from sources, in some case, Facebook marketplace, which is free, and they're charging for it. I, I struggle with that. Um, I, I don't think I can sleep at night. But, uh, you know, look, it's, it's an improvement over what they were the dealer was paying for before. I just think it's a crappy uh, use of funds. And, um, you know, I, I would encourage any dealer to dig into their GA and say, how many cars is it going to? You know, they're going to see a massive amount of it is going to the same cars. You know, yeah. And by the <laughs> way, it's funny. I was looking at a Kia store and and their top 10 vehicles from, you know, one of these these folks were to their used Mercedes, which, by the way, I'm sure they're making, you know, great front and back on that thing. But, you know, you, you got to keep your franchise open and uh, they got plenty of Kia inventory. So. You know, is that a good use of funds? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, I agree, man. I, I, I well, I mean, I, I want to keep friends in the industry too, but I'm, I'm, I'm hundred percent on the dealer side. So I don't, I do the fact that they're using Facebook when dealers can use Facebook, you know what I mean? Like wh why? Like you just cut the middle, man, and do it yourself. I don't know. That's yeah. my thought, but, um, Amen. And, and by the way, it's not that hard to do, right? You know, I know. I mean, yeah. do you do you think on that note? Do you think that we're going to get to a point where it's oversaturation on Facebook, and ever, you're going to see a bunch of car dealers on there, and then and then you're it's like 
you know? I mean, I think trouble. that a bunch of car dealers are already on Facebook. Um, yeah. I, I think that, and again, I'm going to keep it philosophical. Like, hey, we're big Facebook. Part we're, I think we're still the only double badged Facebook development and advertising partner in auto. So wow, Facebook is that. a spectacular source of traffic. Yeah. I think that, you know, you can get lost in the 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 amount of traffic that you can get and i think you could and facebook would probably love this but you could spend your entire marketing budget in facebook i i wouldn't recommend it um you know i think all of the channels have their their reason and mm -hmm. i think they have their benefits and negatives and um you know our perspective is that you should be getting the best shopper regardless of of channel in the moment for the you know, for in our case the vehicle that you need help with so Yes, I think Facebook will become more saturated. I think Google SEM is wildly saturated. Um, I think dealers overspend in both today. Sure. Um, I think that, you know, being a dealer is hard, man. I mean, I, God, I love dealers. I mean, they're just good. The vast majority of them are just good, honest, hardworking entrepreneurs. And, and that's really been a foundation for our company, but man, their expertise is selling cars. It's right. not digital marketing. And, and you know, to your earlier point about hiring somebody who it is, if you can do it, it's spectacular. If you can't, man, you got to figure it out because you know, you don't use it, you're going out of business. And so I really think when, you know, people are pounding on you, the OEMs, you know, man, you got to spend more digital, got to spend more digital. What do they do? They put it in things that they know, Facebook, Google, um, you know, maybe some other things that they, you know, they're familiar with because they're familiar. Dealers don't buy a lot of cars as a consumer right they might buy a lot of cars from themselves but man they don't shop like regular folk and i think that that's really hard for us as an industry to wrap our mind around and um so short answer to your question i mean a, a very powerful yes but that doesn't diminish the power of any of those channels i just think sure. you need to use them for good and not waste your money on overlap and and like a, a fixed channel strategy well, so so here's the other question that I've been asking guests this season. And listen, it's not I'm not like a third party hater. I think that they that they have a place. You sure. know what I, mean? I think that the days where they were charging twenty thousand dollars or some of those days are long gone. And if you're a dealer, well, they that, should be gone. They're not gone. They're still doing that. Well, yeah, but if I was going to say, if you're a dealer that's still paying that, I they mean, that, me. th that's got to be more relationship based than than uh, you or know. Or they got pictures results based yeah something <laughs> but um so so you know is google and facebook an effective if you just add those two things right and you and you know you and the, and you know obviously you you need partners to leverage those because to your point the dealers don't they're that's not their expertise right. but let's just say basics if you were on google and on facebook effectively retargeting targeting you know vin specific all that stuff would you is would that be enough? I would probably say no. Here's why. Um, either one of those channels probably have over ninety percent penetration of automotive shoppers. Mm -hmm. And so on the surface, that would say, man, they got you covered, right? They, I mean, they're touching everybody who's going to buy a car, right? Uh, I think the reality is, is that the when and the why and the how matter. So if, if all that mattered was reach, then you should spend all your money in out of home advertising because the people who are driving by that sign are seeing it and they're going to come down and buy. We know as an industry today that that's not how it works anymore. Right. It's the same thing, right? You talk about Google. Damn, everything starts with Google. I mean, they're, you know, Bing's got some action, Yahoo, whatever. But ultimately, more than 90% of all shopping or all research begins on Google. But it's both of those are single sources. So if you think about what people are doing, you know, they're doing, you know, I think we can all agree they're certainly on more than five sites. The data says they touch, you know, more than 20. Two of them are going to be Google and Facebook, but you know, 20 of them are not going to be. And so what I learned a long time ago, you know, in my Procter and Gamble days is that you want to be where the consumer is in the moment of choice and in the moment of decision-making. In some cases, it's going to be Google or Facebook that you can have your optimized marketing if you're just on those two.
And I'll tell you a story, man. I talked to a really close friend of mine this weekend. He was consulting with the dealer. The dealer was spending across two stores, two small stores, more than $200,000 on search exclusively. It was all of his budget. I can tell you that that one, I mean, that's a lot of money per car that you're selling based on what he was doing. But dude, you got to get more. You got, you have to be broader than that. You have to be. What about traditional, man? Still uh, a part of the mix? Yeah, I think broadly speaking, and, and there are going to be some folks who traditional, they can own, you know, radio or TV and it will work for them. But for most folks, there's too much, there are too many other competing franchises and there's too many choices. I mean, you look at the JD Power um, loyalty, the best win for lose four out of 10. And that's Subaru and, and, you know, the vast majority of, of the volume brands lose the majority of their returning customers, literally six out of 10 or more folks leave the franchise. So you can't count on just brand awareness or, you know, something like that to bring folks in. Now, if you have a unique selling proposition, um, you know, something tangible, like, you know, oil changes for life or, you know, something that you can get out and broadcast, I think there's value. But the reality is consumers are looking for vehicles. They're not buying brands from the dealers per se. Yeah. You know, again, if there's a reason, maybe, you know, if they can trade in their lease and they can get something else and, you know, there's an advantage, maybe. But the reality is, is that most folks shop brand vehicle dealer, but we advertise in an industry brand dealer vehicle. vehicle. Switching those bottom two matters a ton. And so uh, is there a role? I think broadcast has a, a traditional broadcast, whatever, has a very strong role for tier one and even tier two. I think as you get down into tier three individual dealers, really challenging for certainly for passenger vehicles, super high line, you know, I mean, I think we can have a debate about it. But but when, you know, I can buy as a consumer, you know, a vehicle from you or a guy 10 miles away or, or a gal 15 miles away from that, it's unless you have a compelling reason to get me in and you can do that through broadcast. And oh, by the way, you spend enough money to break through the clutter. I, I don't think it's a good use of funds. Yeah. Right on, man. Dude, listen, this has been awesome. We're getting close to that time. I want to give you a moment to talk about lot links, man, and tell us, uh, you know, I know NADA was was a couple weeks ago. Maybe you guys have something new or just just your overall philosophy. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, 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 like I said, I'm, we have? <laughs> I'm a believer, man. I think I think what you guys do makes a lot makes a lot of sense. I think that we we need um, a partner that helps us focus on those cars that are just not getting the attention, and we need to pair them up with people that are looking for that for that inventory. I mean, it's just it just makes sense. No. Um, I I appreciate that. I mean, if I had the the elevator pitch for lot links, it's it's really about we're through lots of different sources that we can get into. We're able to understand every single vehicle for sale in the US, new and used, list price and when it moves. We also capture online consumer automotive shopping behavior to the tune of 100 million interactions per day. Wow. All of that gets fed into artificial intelligence. So that whenever we see a consumer or a vehicle, we're able to take in all of the market dynamics, all of the competitive activity, all of what's going on on that vehicle on the third parties and on your lot to determine, does it need help? Can we match it up with uh, a shopper that we see at the right time across the right channel? Not just, oh, we're only on social, we're only on SEM. It's literally anywhere they go, millions of sites. And then ultimately put them onto that vehicle, that ve that vehicle details page on your website because ultimately you as the dealer are the one who's going to deliver that car and sell it to them. I'm not about putting them somewhere where you know you got to duke it out with your competitor. And so it's just around taking that just massive amounts of data and using it to you know match up the right person to the right VIN and just get the hell out of the way and let you guys make magic. Yeah. I love that, dude. Anything new uh, that you guys are coming out with? Uh... Yeah, we, we've got a couple of really cool things. So one we call Turn X, and it, it is literally a buy VIN representation of all of that data. So we're able to look at your, industry, uh, your, your dealership, 
or the third parties. Wait, let me interject. Is that the yeah. the plugin? Yes, yeah, the plugin. Yep. Dude, that thing is awesome, man. It's yeah, so, so cool. And so it will Dude. tell you here's where your VIN fits versus everything else. And you here's can boost what, it right from the dude. Totally. That's brilliant. And, and because a lot of times you don't need to boost it, right? It's getting great traffic. But right. a lot of times what I see is dealers are leaving money on the table. And it goes back to nobody's looked at it and they've dropped the price, dropped the price, dropped the price. And you know, what's the average price drop? 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Man, they're five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars below what it will take to sell that vehicle. No, right. But nobody's looked at it. Yeah. And so it will tell you you should raise the price and then boost it. And and man, the, the reception we've had on that is just incredible. Because it highlights your VINs and the yellow thing. So uh, every, dude, oh, it's so yeah, that's dope. I mean, it literally helps you make more money and sell more cars. I mean, it it's like beautiful. So we have that. You know, one of the other things that we've had for a long time, it's not new, but I think a lot of people are it's new to a lot of people is is what we call VinView Optimizer. And and that takes all of your inventory, all of the action you have on your website and on the third parties and breaks it out by VIN so you can see what vehicles need help. You don't have to use us, man. You can go out and do whatever you want to do. But it's really just a way to start to measure that without having to be a GA expert. And, and then, you know, the last thing I'd say that's really, we've really seen some incredible, um, just, you know, eyes go wide and like, holy shit, you can do that, is what we call the MSR report. And it, it is taking every vehicle on a dealer's lot, all of the data we have around shopping behavior, and sales for a market and competitive activity and saying, here, these are going to be a problem for you. They may not be, they may, they may be five days old, but you're gonna be worried about them in 60. You need to start figuring it out right now. Wow. Yeah. And, and the ability to pull forward those problems and solve them before they're a problem, I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And you know, we started out and, and doing other things and now the data is so powerful and and your ability as a dealer to you know manage your inventory with these tools, I mean you know you had talked to me you know before we got going about how things are going. That's why things are going so great That's because awesome. can, because dealers are like, you know this, holy shit, you know I can't believe it. Yeah, we know it. I mean we literally know every single shopper in the market and every single vehicle and what action they're getting. Seems like that would matter. That's awesome. Yeah. So. As usual, go to the show notes or go to the, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, go to the video descriptions and I'm going to link as much of this stuff in there. So you guys can go check it out. I'm going to tell you that the, the, the plugin is super dope. So if you don't have it and you're using lot links, like you got to, you got to get that like now it's really, 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 really cool. And um, thank you. And I say anything we can do, right? I mean, you can DM me, LinkedIn, email, call, smoke signals, whatever works. I mean, I just love, love, love talking to smart folks and who, who are interesting or want to learn or just want to do better in business, man, it's my jam. Dude, get Jason on a, on a GA review. You're going to have a lot of fun, man. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. I know you're a busy Herb guy. Loved it. Appreciate Thanks for having me, brother. Hey, so there is one question that I ask everybody that comes on the show. And that question is, where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? You know, I think that we're going to continue to take friction out of selling cars. I, I don't believe it, even in five years, consumers are going to go totally online. I think it's such a big purchase. You got to touch it, feel it, sit in it, drive it. You want to smell the leather. Um, there's going to be a percentage of folks who do, man, there's going to be big valuations on companies that, that cater to that. But the bread and butter for dealers is not going to be like that. But we need to find as an industry ways to remove friction, friction in advertising, friction in, friction in attracting customers, friction in moving customers through the lot. The, the days of a two, three, four, five hour wear down at the store to get through all the paper, man, they, they got to change. Because if they don't, we're going to see folks defecting to areas where they don't have to go to a store. And um, I just think from a dealership standpoint, we're going to evolve and we're going to get smarter about it. Right on, man. There it is. Dude, again, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Jason Knight, everybody. Um, that's all the time we have for today. And as usual, we'll talk.
later we only host the well respected the vendor lexus nexus we don't sell digital marketing what you do we inspected with our dt vendor management solutions we come in like the epa to clear out the pollution Take the trash so keep your p and l clean your inventory lean. from product pitches meetings to cost negotiations your vendors have you swamped you have cars to sell but most of your time goes in managing your vendor relationships. Wouldn't it help to have someone navigate the way ahead? Enter Dealer Talk Vendor Management Solutions. A filter between you and your vendor so you only have to deal with what's most important. We inspect your digital data to get optimum results for your money. Here's what we do. Give you an accurate idea of what's working and what's not for every digital service. Get vendors to submit monthly highlights, lowlights, and recommendations. Sift through their data to give you those metrics that matter. Evaluate all package, content, or cost changes and product pitches. Do monthly marketing budget analysis to ensure better ROIs. Finally, we give you concise reports and monthly videos with actionable insights. Now, you can focus on what really matters, selling cars. Contact us today and your first 30 days are free. Let's build your business together.